Hi, Joe. Um, have you got your team in your head yet? 11 or 12? We haven't at the minute. Um, we're going to you know, take our time with the, the limited information we have on this ground on pink ball cricket. We're going to make sure we, we give ourselves as much information as possible going into the game before we make that decision. What are your main considerations at the moment? I think having a real good understanding of what this pitch might look like tomorrow morning. Um, and, you know, ahead of that first ball, it's changed quite drastically over the last few days. It's probably been a bit more live grass um, than, than previous wickets that we've seen out here. Um, but it has it has got drier and drier as the, as the days have gone, as you'd expect it to. So it's just having real clarity on what balance of attack we want. Um, and, and as well, utilising this practice tonight, um, you know, seeing how much due might play and uh, how, how big a factor that might be in, you know, in this test and you know, whether that alters things at all. So is it fair to say you're considering playing an extra seamer then in, and that's the decision you've got to make? I think there's a few things, yeah. Um, that's certainly been one of them. How's Joffre Archer? Is he fully fit and firing now? Yeah, again, it'd be good to get through uh, training tonight to have absolute clarity, but it's great to see him back, um, back bowling again. You know, he, he adds to what is a very strong bowling group, um, you know, very much a, a big part of, of what we're about and um, about England cricket moving forward. So to see him back in, in amongst things would be very exciting and hopefully, you know, he, he is fit up for selection. Yeah, well, if the pink ball's doing a bit and he is fit, it'd be very difficult to leave him out, wouldn't it? Yeah, as, as mentioned, you know, he is world-class performer. He's got all of the skills. Um, he can bowl high pace, swing it both ways and, and obviously can make it talk off the seam as well. So, um, you know, along with the rest of the guys all in contention, it's, it's a very exciting place to be. And, you know, to have now a, a battery of fast bowlers to choose from is, is where we want to be and where we want to you know, keep improving moving forward. And if you do go with an extra seamer, does Chris Wokes come very much into the equation? As I said, the, the whole the whole group is very much um, in in amongst things. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll we'll make that decision going into tomorrow. And just on this stadium, a huge stadium, and, and the prospect of, of tens of thousand fans in there. What do you make of that? Uh, well, yeah, it's it's a phenomenal stadium. It, it's, I'm sure it's going, you're going to see some brilliant cricket over the years at this ground. Um, it, it looks fantastic. So hopefully, you know, the wicket can. Um, produce some very good cricket and the two sides can can do that as well um, I'm sure the atmosphere within will be, be electric it's great to see fans back in um, in the previous game um, so I'm sure with the capacity of this ground that that noise will go up again and you know that's that's what you want you want to be a part of these big games be playing in these big stadiums and um, you know be you know part of history which is what this game is Thanks Joe Thank you Sam Allard please Hi, hey Joe, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Sam? Good, thanks, Joe. Um, Joe, I know you said you need to, to have a look at the pitch this evening and assess sort of the balance of the team, but just wondering with, with the batting, are you any clearer on that? I know we've got Johnny Bairstow speaking with us live in about 10 minutes' time. Can you give us any clues as to whether Johnny might come back into the team? Well, we'll, uh, we'll get a squad to you when we're, when we're ready. Um, I think that's, that's how we want to do things. We, we, we just want to make sure we're really sure on everything and... And when we're absolutely ready, we'll give you the full squad together. Ben Stokes spoke with us recently and he said that Ollie Pope could surpass all of the records that you set for England over the next couple of years. Um, as a, an experienced batsman, what's it been like for you watching Pope's development over the last couple of years and how far do you think he could go in this England test team? I think he's got a wonderful game. I think he's a great player. Um, I, you know, he, he has, he's learning in this part of the world. It's a new experience for him, for sure. But he's got all of the attributes. He's got a very good game, very good all-round game and a very mature head on your shoulders. So I, I, I completely agree with what Ben said. I think it's everything there. It's now, can he go and, and, and prove that? Um, but he, he's certainly got the ability and, and the attributes needed to, to go and be a real performer in, uh, in Test cricket for, for many years to come. Thanks, John. Good luck. Thank you. Will McPherson, please. Hi, Joe. I, I appreciate you might, not, you might not give anything away about who, who's actually going to play, but could you just talk us through the situation with that top order, with, with Zach and Johnny both available again, I think, um, and, and sort of where Rory's form is at and, and Dan Lawrence as well? 
yeah, it, I think it's a great headache to have these two guys back in in, in the fold and available for selection. So, um, you know, it's it's been a tricky tour for our batters. It's it's been very alien conditions. It's been a lot of learnings that's been going on, and I think the guys have responded well to that. They trying to develop all the time, trying to keep improving um, and adding to what are very good games um, that have had success in, in the test arena so far. So that's the thing that I'm looking at more than anything. Of course, we're here to win and we're here to produce results. But, you know, if you're trying to build a team over a long period of time, you need to keep looking to get better and adding things all the time. And the, the attitude that the group have shown in that respect has been been outstanding. So long may that continue. Um, you know, we, we have got some difficult decisions to make, but these are headaches that we didn't have a year or so ago as well. And um, you know, that's testament to this, the hard work that these guys have put in. Is it, uh, is it particularly difficult for left-handers in these conditions with Ashwin and that, and that rough outside their off stump? Yeah, well, he's a world-class performer. Um, you know, I think it's been, it's been quite tricky for everyone, but as you mentioned, in particular, the lefties against, against him because you know, of how skillful he is, how good his record has been against uh, against our left-handers and, well, in, in world cricket, his record against left-handed batters. So, um, you know, he's a fine performer at home and, and guys just have to keep working hard to try and figure out how they're going to score their runs. I think one thing that I, I watched, how he played Leachy, for example, in the previous game, um, scoring that 100, how he used the crease to his advantage, not just coming down the wicket, but also getting deep in his crease and, and trying to make it very hard for Jack to bowl one length at him, um, you know, trying to make mix his length up all the time. I think we've got to keep being proactive, being smart about how we're going to look to score our runs and and really make it difficult for for their spinners to to you know to bowl six balls at us. As I mentioned previously, and we've spoken to you, I think that's one thing that they did well, and one thing that we could have improved with the ball was the amount of times that um, we couldn't quite string a maiden together or bowl six balls at one batter. Um, which I, I think they were very proactive with their batting. They managed to rotate strike very well. Um, so they're all things that we can take forward as a batting group and that we can add to our own games and make it a little bit more tricky for them when, um, you know, when we come to bat next time. John Etheridge, please. Good morning. Um, Gordon Anderson have not played a test match together so far this winter and Jimmy was telling us two days ago, but it has crossed their mind that they might not play a game together ever, particularly overseas. Um, has that crossed your mind? Do you think they're done as a, as a pairing, particularly overseas? I, I think you'd be wrong to ever write off those two to do anything. Um, you know, the records that they've had, the things that they've produced, especially in the last couple of years, has been, well, it's a reason why they're, they're up there with the top three bowlers in the world. They're you know, consistently getting better. The older they get, they're, they're using their experience um, to their advantage all of the time and um, you know there's, there's I'm sure there will be opportunities where they get to play together you know in the near future and you know much further down the line as well um, you're talking about two of English greatest bowlers and um, you know the records that they set will be very difficult for anyone to surpass so I feel there's a lot of life left in them both um, and you know you, you add in guys like Jofra um, Woody, Wokesy, all of these skillful balls around them. We're building a very good team and that they're both very much at the front of. And plainly, they've got a chance of playing together tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, they have got a chance. Um, you know, as I say, it's a great selection headache to have, is to have all of these bowlers performing, putting in performances and, and giving us real variety so that we feel that we, we can pick a team that best suits the, um, the conditions and the best makeup that we think is going to balance things very well. And just finally on, on board, Anderson, I mean, can sentiment ever play a part in selection or do you have to be absolutely hard-headed? I mean, sometimes it must be tempting to be the old timers, wait one more fling together. <laughs> I think you've got to look at the game. It's in front of you. Of course, there's that emotional side to things which you do have to sometimes put to the side. Um, but the one thing that you know with the two of them, that they'll never let you down. They'll, they'll try hard to set a very good example for, for the whole group. Um, and that's why they've been such proven performers for such a long period of time. It's because of how they go about things, how they're constantly finding ways to motivate themselves, new challenges and goals to, to chase down. Um, and, you know, that I think they've been a big part of us building such a, you know, a good group of, of fast bowlers in the recent times. It's because of the example they set, the way they speak to these, these young guys coming through and, and help aid their development as well. 
Dean Wilson, please. Yeah, hi, uh, morning, stroke, afternoon, Joe. Um, Good morning. Uh, again, with the, with the team, um, without trying to second guess too much, um, are the opening duo safe and secure in their roles, or, or are you looking at um, Zach Crawley um, as well, possibly replacing uh, Rory? As I said, I'll give you the whole squad together. Um, you know, I think that's that's the way we want to want to do it. Is we'll deliver that when when we're ready. You know, hopefully we can get to that to you sooner rather than later. Um, but it, you know, that, I think that's the the best way of going about things. But as mentioned, it's great to see Zach back up up to speed and and um, looking at full fitness again, as it is with with Joffre too. And, and then when you're making that decision, um, you, you've said you're looking at the specifically. So does there anything like central contracts come into come into play i remember when you had a decision to make between zach and, and joe denley you went with the with the youth last summer and obviously zach um performed admirably after that choice you, you may have a decision to make between zach johnny and, and dan lawrence i mean zach's the only one with a central contract does that give him an extra um you know hey I didn't quite finish, hear the end of your question, but I think I got the gist of it. Um, in terms of central contracts, Dean, that's that's completely not my remit. Um, you know, the squad is selected for this trip, and then it's very much our responsibility to pick the side that we think is going to win the game. Um, you know, I'm not involved in those those contract uh, negotiations, or well, they're not negotiations, are they? But um, those talks, if you like, and and how they're handed out and awarded. So. For me, it's about trying to pick the team that we think is going to win. It, it doesn't really have any reflection on what whatever contract they are. We're just trying to pick the side that we think is best going to win every test. Match. And just finally, for me, England's most recent pink ball test saw them bowled out for 58. Uh, India's most recent pink ball test saw them bowled out for 36. How do those experiences affect your thought processes going into another pink ball game? Yeah, I think there's been a trend of the actual all, all of the pink ball test matches that there have been collapses on occasion. You look at the, the game that we played against the West Indies and, um, you know, there was that collapse in the in the first innings, I, I think, um, of, of their innings. It, it seems to be a trend and it's something that as a batting group, you need to make sure that you, you stop. And I suppose one thing that stands out to me is that it's the vital first 20 balls, making sure you get used to the tracking the ball, um, get used to the conditions. And you know, being very aware of of how things can change throughout the day. It's not necessarily just been that one moment under lights or that twilight period that's that's had that effect. It's sometimes been right at the start of the game, you know, in the morning session, late on in day four, um, that these strange sort of passages of play have happened. So um, I suppose it's when you get that opportunity. Uh, and, and you're on the right side of it, you're in the field, a ball in hand, you really get on a roll with it, you, you take every opportunity and chance and, and you make that really count in your favour. Similarly, when, with a bat in hand, you, you just got to really make sure that those 20 balls you're fighting um, with everything you've got to, to get yourself in, get accustomed to the wicket, the conditions, um, and, and, and make sure that you build that partnership, which is so vital. Thank you. Three more. Three more now, please. We've got uh, Shashwat, Nikhil, and then Dave Charlesworth. So, uh, Shashwat, first, please. Uh, good afternoon, Joe. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine as well. I just have a couple of questions for you. So, firstly, yours as a batting group has had a few problems against left arm spin, both in the current series and in the recent series against Sri Lanka. So, have you? So, now that you've had these ten days, have you worked on? something specifically to tackle Akshar Patel or someone of that sort? I think we've we've worked very hard as a whole uh, in terms of our batting group. We try to speak about the challenges that this pink ball will represent, that actually it has got quite hard hard seam on it. It seems to stay harder for longer. Not only will that aid the seamers, but I think it will aid the spinners as well. It might give them a little bit more bounce um, and it might, you know, might turn quicker for longer, if you like, um, with, the, with the ball staying a little bit firmer. So it's just being very aware of that. Um, I think you can get sometimes sucked into those individual uh, battles where, you know, you get out to one bowler a couple of times and you feel that they've got the wood over you. And actually, 
you've just got to play what's in front of you. You play the ball. You don't play anything other than that. Uh, and, and have real trust and, and clarity in your own game and how you want to score your runs. I think that's the only way that we can look at things. Um, and you know, I have full confidence that we've got a great group of players that are more than capable of scoring runs out here. Okay, so just as a little continuation to that question, so you talked about individual battles and Rishabh Pant versus Jack Leach has been one of the battles of the series so far. So has has this longer gap given you a little more time to actually work on something, on getting him out early and not being able to do as much damage to you? Yeah, well, I think the, the way that uh, the way that that battle finished in the last game was was probably um, one to Jack. So I, I think he'll gain a lot of confidence from that. And, you know, he's a fine player. He plays some some extraordinary shots. It makes it very difficult for some bowlers to bowl at him. But more than anything, it's you know, can we can we keep keep him quiet? Can we make it difficult for him to to really take us on um, and find ways of, of either getting him off strike or you know, chucking one up in the air, running past one like he did in the last game? And you know that with Rishabh, he's extremely talented and he's got a great game, but he will give you a chance. Um, and we just got to be ready to take that when it comes. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Nikhil now, please. Yeah, Joe, just one question. England can still qualify for the World Test Championship Finals at Lords if you beat India 3-1 with a margin of two test matches. So do you have that goal also in your mind when you will replay these next two test matches? Yeah, we, we, obviously our goal is to try and get there. Um, we, we, we go into every test match trying to do everything we can to win. And you know, we've got to look after this week first. We've got to make sure that we... You know, we play some really good cricket in what will be very different conditions, I'm sure, to the last game. Um, and the challenges that this this test match present will might be very stark from um, from what we saw at Chennai. So it's easy to get sucked into looking too far ahead. We just got to, I'm, I'm being extremely cliche, but we've just got to look after that first session. We've seen how important it was. We've been on the wrong side of that in a previous pink ball game. We've also... Um, you know, got it right and got ahead of things and, and seeing how much of an advantage that can be too. So um, let's let's do everything we can to win this game and then we can hopefully be in a position to talk talk about that as a as a real possibility um if 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 we get the result we, we desire this this time around. Last of all now please uh, Dave Charlesworth. Hi Joe. Um Mark said pace ball is uh, queuing up to get the hands on the pink ball and Ben said the seam is a, a lick in the lips. As a visiting captain in India, that must be up there with one of the most encouraging things you can hear from, from your seamers. But is there a sense that you might have to temper those expectations as well? Because I know you've said before that you expect the, the pitch will spin at some point. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure at some point the wicket will turn. Um, you know, but, but every test wicket does at some point. Well, the majority of test wickets do at some point. It's just... It's just when and will it happen off the straight? Will it happen out of the rough? It might be that this pitch deteriorates, you know, in a similar fashion to the first one of, of the series. It might it might not. Um, we've just got to be ready to react to it. And you know what? The fact that the, the guys are full of confidence and really excited to have potentially a big impact out here in India with, with ball in hand as, as a scene group is, is really exciting one. How we operate, I don't think changes. I think we've still got to look to build pressure for long periods of time, try and squeeze the game, make it very difficult for, for guys to, to score freely and score boundaries. Um, you know, and, and by doing that, build, you know, build pressure at one end and on one batter and try and force an error. The fact that there might be extra lateral movement um, will, will obviously work in our favour as well. So, um, yeah, that's, that's in terms of tempering expectations it is just simple simple game plans the more that um it's doing in your favor i think shane Warne mentioned it recently is you know as a, as a as a spinner the more it's spinning the more defensively you bowl and the more you attack with the field i think it's very much the same as a for a steamer in similar favorable conditions thanks all of us Cheers. thank you very much everyone that's very much appreciated thanks for your patience today as well take care and, and have a great rest of your day thank you thank you very much everyone